It's almost two and I've been letting him watch Cocomelon. But now I had to get him speech therapy so I can get him to talk. There are hundreds and hundreds of anecdotes in which parents mention the exact same problem. The Cocomelon show is so insanely addictive, it's being compared to nicotine and causing developmental issues amongst the kids who can't stop watching. Children's TV expert Jerrica Sands calls it the most damaging show a child can watch, explaining the sneaky ways in which they make the show addictive. Firstly, there's the colours. Take for example the wheels on the bus. The three main colours, blue, green and yellow, are all at maximum saturation, meaning they cannot be made any brighter, no matter how hard you try. Extreme saturation is normally used for alerts and notifications, as it's exciting, dynamic and attracts attention, which is why it's also used in slot machines. Cocomelon puts these colours in perfect contrast, making them appear even more vibrant, which is different to, for example, Bluey, in which the colours instead blend together. Cocomelon's also different because it's highly repetitive. There's a reason they have 38 videos with over a billion views. A child's brain is wired to learn through repetition, so it feels right to them to watch the same thing over and over again. Cocomelon abuses this in almost every video. For example, in the Yes Yes Playground song, they pick a word to repeat three times in every sentence, pairing it with a subtly repeating background lullaby, keeping children hooked. Literally no show or movie puts my son into a deep trance the way Coco Melon does. The second it's on the TV, he turns into a toddler zombie who doesn't see or hear anything else that's going on in the room. This is only exacerbated by Coco Melon's subtitles, which have also been a heavy point of criticism. The letters are not educational, I can barely read them fast enough. It's simply another interesting element to capture your little one's attention. Coco Melon explains in every description, our goal is to help make learning a fun and enjoyable experience for kids, giving you the peace of mind that your children are receiving quality educational content. But people have argued that they're teaching exactly what children shouldn't do. For example, in the No No Bedtime song, the baby refuses to brush his teeth, have a bath, put on pyjamas or get in bed. The education is that he eventually agrees to do so, yet a TikTok user was critical stating, anytime I'd ask my son to do a simple task, he'd say no no no. He's sitting there watching Cocomelon, which taught him no 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 and to say no to me. On the topic of education, Jerrica Sand stated, these people don't give a sh about our children. They care about money. That's it. Your child's cognitive development in direct exchange for their wealth, and there's pretty good evidence supporting this. A New York Times journalist visited Coco Melon's studio, discovering their number one focus is keeping children hooked. What he's about to explain is one of the most evil experiments I've ever heard done to children. And this type of stuff happens all the time, and the average American and the average person on the planet doesn't understand how evil corporations are. You gotta hear this. Coco Millen's data and analytics team sifts constantly through YouTube numbers to determine exactly what resonates. Should a girl wear black jeans or blue jeans? Should the music be louder or softer? Should the bus be yellow or red? Yellow is the answer, as they use a darker method to ensure that they're correct. Coco Millen has a dedicated Distractatron room in which once a month children are brought here one at a time and shown a handful of episodes to figure out exactly which parts of the shows are in engaging and which are tuned out. Next to the TV playing Cocomelon, there's a second screen which plays a continuous loop of banal real world scenes. A guy pouring a cup of coffee, someone getting a haircut, each lasting about 20 seconds. Whenever a youngster looks away from the Moonbug show to glimpse the Distractatron, a note is jotted down. We can see what they're looking at and the exact moment when they got distracted. Therefore, education clearly isn't the primary goal. Keeping kids' attention is I feel like this next part is even more sinister than the last. This is how TikTok keeps adults addicted and they're using it against children. And this is proven by Coco Melon's most addictive element, rapid camera cutting. It's crazy how many times the frame changes on Coco Melon. It's the same type of addicting behavior that we experience on a TikTok binge. It's the quick change of frame that releases that dopamine and makes the videos addicting to watch. Count the seconds between a change of frame. Well, TikToker the circus brain did exactly this. He firstly counts the changes on My Little Pony, concluding there's about six seconds between each cut. He then compares it to Cocomelon. One, two, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, one, 
to one, to one, to one. In her video, The Nightmare That Is Cocomelon, Cervantix draws a similar conclusion. She found that 96% of the shots in Baby Shark were shorter than two seconds. She then compares four different animated shows, again finding Cocomelon has the shorter shots. The longest shot on a Cocomelon video was six seconds. The longest shot on Arcane was eight seconds. The longest shot on Bluey was 27 seconds. And the longest shot on Encanto was 18 seconds. Which when combined with every other element, Element, create some terrifying statistics. Dr. Kristen Summer explained that when showing an infant normal video content, they'll focus on the screen just 11% of the time. However, when the video is instead switched to Cocomelon, their screen engagement skyrockets to a whopping 74%. This therefore produces stories such as this. I used to volunteer for a preschool and they had song time. A Cocomelon video came on and all of the tots stopped what they were doing, put down their cheese crackers and remain fixated on the screen for the duration of the video. It was honestly kind of terrifying. YouTuber Saberspark shared his own personal anecdote. He asked to watch a Disney movie with his two younger cousins who both completely refused and instead spent all day glued to an iPad playing the addictive show. In Cocomelon Made My Kid a Zombie, a mother talks about her son. He would be in a daze while watching it. You could be waving your hand right in front of his face and he wouldn't move. It was almost scary. This was also discovered by Sarah Mills 98, who explained when the Cocomelon addiction is so real that my one-year-old can navigate the TV to turn it on by himself. However, nothing shows the addiction better than the Cocomelon TikTok trend. Parents will play the show's intro loudly and video their kids sprinting toward the television where you can witness their mood change instantly. The New York Times journalist found something similar. The kid in the Distractatron had had shown up in the midst of a tantrum, which ended the second he heard the Coco Melon theme song. It was no surprise to Wheeler, the head of research. 99% of kids, he said, if they're having issues when they get here, once that Coco Melon song comes on, they're like, ah, life is okay, all is good with the world. Obviously, there's a reason for this. Cocomelon is so hyper-stimulating that it actually acts as a drug and what happens when you take the drug away. Young children experiencing symptoms of addiction and withdrawal, obviously leaving them completely dysregulated. That a child would have to experience something like withdrawal and possibly like a come down from something is something that almost brings a tear to my eye because I understand what that feels like as an adult. And as a child, having to experience something like that, it's that seems like something just horrible to me. And you can imagine that this is happening on a large scale because they have billions of views on almost each video. TikTok user ThePoff1 filmed what happens when you take the show away, explaining he'll be inconsolable for at least 10 to 15 minutes after, adding in the description, Coco Melon Meltdown is legit. Once you have a taste of the cocoa, it's hard to break the addiction, which this Reddit user had experienced even worse. My husband and I have been worried about our child. I can slowly see how she'd throw violent tantrums at home and in church whenever she'd get bored and would want to watch the show. Her behavior changed changes the moment she watches the show and she will not even eat her meals if she wouldn't watch it. After these tantrums end, kids can experience a general discomfort in the speed of everyday life. The more they watch the show, the more their brain begins to expect this intense level of stimulation. Basically, Coco Melon overstimulates their brains so much that everything else just seems slow and boring in comparison. However, the potential consequences get much worse than this. As mentioned at the start, it was the cause of a child speaking problem with a notable reply reading, same thing happened with my daughter too. She's four but can't speak properly. She knows the words, but she does not like to frame the sentence or speech. She has been watching these Cocomelons or such other stuffs for two or three years. Hope we're not too late. Over on Reddit, a speech language pathologist explained, screen time in general is linked with speech delays for a variety of reasons, but Cocomelon is excessively bad. Firstly, unlike other 
other TV shows or movies, it doesn't have a story. It's just very short clips with poorly written songs. The kids aren't able to follow the plot, learn vocabulary, and see the resolution of a conflict, supported by infant specialist Meg Fora. And the problem with fast-paced TV programs is that we find that little one's language development is slower. On the Agents of Speech YouTube channel, this is again confirmed. The main problem with watching videos on the internet is that they don't know how to use the language that they learn. But he adds that four to five hours of screen time per day can make a toddler completely non-verbal. Four to five hours is obviously a lot of time, but in Coco Melon Made My Kid a Zombie, researchers discovered that five-year-olds who watch more than two hours of TV a day tended to have lower attention spans and were 7.7 .7 times more likely to show symptoms of ADHD. Their screen times might be even lower for Coco Melon specifically because, as explained by Jerrica Sands, not all screen time is created equal. A child who just watched 30 minutes of Coco Melon and a child who just watched 30 minutes of Trash Truck will look like a very, very different child. Thankfully, here lies a simple solution. Sierra Renee explained my two-year-old is speech delayed and addicted to Coco Melon. Switched to Miss Rachel two days ago and he's already saying more words and hasn't had any tantrums. Kim.it shared an almost identical anecdote. My eight-month-old was obsessed with Coco Melon and having bad tantrums, so I cancelled Coco Melon and only let her watch Miss Rachel, and she said her first word within the first three days of watching. Clearly, parents are able to simply change the channel, but not before leaving Coco Melon a massive amount of dislikes. They've therefore earned the title, the absurdly popular kid show parents hate, and Coco Melon has actually responded to the criticism. That explain our shows are not intended to replace outdoor playtime or playdates. They have a place in children's entertainment time, and as with food, exercise, etc., it comes down to each parent to find the right and appropriate balance for their children. Our responsibility is ensuring that the quality of the content that we produce is high and beneficial for the development of a child's cognitive and soft skills. It is worth adding that our social media communities are filled with stories of parents who experience firsthand how Moonbug content helps their children. Cocomelon does have a crazy amount of supporters, but it's obvious that some of them are simply ignoring the downsides. My baby learned the alphabet and numbers from Cocomelon. She may not speak a complete sentence, but she expresses her wants through phrases. But is it Coco Melon's responsibility to ensure that babies are talking? Well, I believe it should be, just like companies that serve food have a responsibility not to serve food that'll make someone sick and give them food poisoning. Well, no. People love blaming cartoons and games for raising children, and not the shitty parents that don't step in to stop them from watching so much. Cocomelon is actually a really sad symbol of parents giving their children tablets instead of actually parenting and interacting with them. Yes, parents have a responsibility to their children also, but putting the blame solely on the parents, I don't believe is accurate. I believe the company has something to do with it. They understand that they have a distractatron focus group type thing, whatever they do to children to make sure that they are paying attention to their show and whenever they look away. I mean, that's pure evil. They, they understand how to manipulate children so much that it's starting to cause speech problems. So I believe it's, all, it's not just solely the parents that are to blame.